backtracking episode proper for Honey Blood. We will start the band's debut album, Honey Blood. <gasps> Released in 2014, we come with VFAC at Ruggles, and I couldn't find anything on a producer for this album, so let's just say that the band did it themselves. To be honest, there really wasn't a lot of information that I could find behind this album except for one fact, which I'll get to in about 5432 now. So, about six months after Fat Cat signed Honey Blood, Shona McVicker, the band's drummer, left to get a dentistry degree, being temporarily replaced by Ram Morris before Shona would return just in time for this album. The album itself is just a charming lo fi leaning piece of indie rock, and heck, if it is the band producing it themselves, as I'm just assuming that it is, then they do a really bank up job here. And their performances sound good too. Steena has a really good voice for fitting this style and a natural Scottish accent only occasionally slips out, not to mention a guitar work having an appropriately soothing nature to match the genre. And Shona's drumming is more than capable of keeping up with that too, keeping a good rhythm in time with Steena's guitar work and the drummer's backing vocals provide a nice counter to the lead singers. And the pacing is about what you would expect from an album of this style too. It's not too fast, but it doesn't need to be, and if you want a good example of indie rock with a raw production and sense of style, you could do a lot worse than this, honestly. The band also have fun with the lyrics, going over things like loneliness, self-doubt, and a bizarre sense of moving on, showing their maturity at such an early stage in their career, I mean this is their debut, and my favourite song goes to the song called Bud. As in the song is named Bud, there isn't a song called a song called Bud, just clarifying that. Honey Blood self-titled first bit of tunage is about what you would expect from the genre, and sure it doesn't do anything new, but the band know what they're doing, it's put together well, and it's got some really good sounds on the production end too. Next is the band's second album, Babes Never Die, released in 2016. It would again come out through Fat Cat Records, and we actually have a producer for this one by the name of James Drink. So after their debut album came out, drummer Shannon McVicker would leave again, this time permanently, and she was replaced by Cat Myers shortly after that. Oh, and the band told a lot to promote their debut, sharing the stage with bands like Foo Fighters and We Were Promised Jetbacks of all bands, and playing other big festivals like South by So What. Back to the album, the first track is an intro track titled Intro, but the first actual song is the title track, and from that alone, we almost have a completely different Honey Blood sound. Maybe it's due to them having a new drummer actually having a producer this time around that I can name, but honestly this album does a good job of capturing all of their genres super well. It's got a more punk rock lilt to it, with almost some Riot girl stuff at points, but it's still also unmistakably their indie rock style without as much lo-fi this time around. It's already a more experimental album from a genre standpoint, and the production follows that too, boosting up a lot of the structure, and I'm going to give props to James Drink for bringing that out in the band. And the lyrics also show a more positive side to the band's writing while still maintaining their maturity with songs about relationships, love, and public image, and it's all sort of linked to a central theme about maintaining your innocence too, hence the album's title. In my opinion, it's also better instrumentally than their debut structurally and production-wise, and honestly, it's just a little charming thing while it lasts, and my favourite song goes to Sea Hearts. Babes Never Die shows more growth for a really young band, Cat Myers fits in well, and the duo just sound great all around on this one. And finally, we reach the band's third album, In Plain Sight. Released in 2019, it would be released for the Marathon Artist label this time around, and I don't know who the producer was for this one, so maybe it was the band again. This also marks another change for Honey Blood, as the band would go from a duo to an Uno, with Steena Tweedale being the only member of the band for this album, and still today as well. See, when they announced the album's release date in February of last year, they also announced the first single being Third Degree, and that Cat Myers had left, leaving Tweedale all on her own for this one. And part of me feels like that may be a detriment to this album, which starts with the song She's Nightmare, and it's clear from it that, again, there's been a change to Honey Blood's core sound, and maybe not the best one? Look, I gave this album around about a C grade when I reviewed it and graded it last year, and listening to it again, that grade sort of still holds up for me. It's not like Stina can't carry this album by herself, as she absolutely can, but the production... Man, the production did a dirty on this one. There's instances of autotune on her voice when she really doesn't need it as she can sing on her own pretty well, and there's other effects that just don't really fit and really bury her voice at times. Also, God, does the instrumental work sound bad, especially the guitar. It's overly fuzzy, and normally I don't mind that, but it's used way too much for my liking here. I don't really mind that it's a popular leaning album, or even that Stina gets to sing more, as her performance is still really good, but the label and the other circumstances around the album are what really drag it down for me. It's all in all not structured badly, sticking well enough to its core loop, and the lyrics do still talk about Honey Blood's usual stuff, with the more vague scope shining a light on things like love, sex, and pain, and there's still some good stories here, and case in point being my favourite song titled Gibberish, I know, weird song, but still, well, weird, weird song name. Honestly, this album does have a good heart, but it's money by really bad production and a new direction that takes a lot of getting used to, even after a couple of lessons. So, despite ending on a bit of a damp note, that is the career of Honey Bullet so far. Did they sound like the first half of their name to you, or were you feel by your age that boiled the latter half of the name? You know, did they sound like Honey, or did they boil your blood? That's the joke I'm trying to make. Anyway, who knows what the future holds, certainly not me, but I do know that the next band that I'll be covering will be Vancouver of British Columbia's own Unleash the Archers. The next thing you're going to see me for most likely will be a new FOTN review this Sunday if there is a Fight of the Night to review, and PBW on Tuesday, and um, I'll try and get the... Very brief history of Unleash the Archers done at some point uh, in the next week as well. Hopefully the next actual episode too, the full episode, might be up by next weekend. I don't know, I can't tell. All I can tell you is this. 
Thank you for watching. You're awesome. Bye-bye.